with the fact that we now have BlackRock, which is ironic, uh, in their position with, uh, with Coinbase. What are your thoughts? Hello everyone, today our guest is Gareth Soloway. In this video, Gareth Soloway talks about the macro situation of the U.S. economy, discussion on the proposed Inflation Act, and Bitcoin and crypto market. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. Last week, Democrats unveiled climate and healthcare legislation called the Inflation Reduction Act, and there's a lot of debate over the name of the proposed public policy measures. After the legislation was revealed, 230 economists sent a letter to the country's House and Senate leaders warning that the proposed policies will actually fuel inflation. The letter stresses that there is an urgent need to curb America's inflationary pressures, but further notes the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 is a misleading label applied to a bill that would likely achieve the exact opposite effect. Inflation has been high in 2022, and the Federal Reserve has been trying to curb the problem by raising the federal funds rate. There's been a lot of debate over whether or not the U.S. is in a recession after two consecutive quarters of negative gross domestic product growth. On Friday, there was some positive news, as the latest U.S. jobs report indicated that 528,000 jobs were added in July and unemployment data slid to pre-pandemic levels. The markets are kind of taking it with a grain of salt. They don't seem to be too positive or too negative on it. I think I think they're taking it the right way, which is that, you know, it is more spending, but at the same time, it's probably not that much compared to multiple rate hikes, like a 75 basis point rate hike by the Fed probably you know, basically negates that if you ask me. Yeah. Um, so I think the markets are kind of in that position of saying, okay, you know, it, it's good for certain stocks, alternate energy, solar stocks, stuff like that. But for the most part, they're all focused on that data at this point, right? We have that two months, like you said, before the next Fed meeting. It's all about the CPI number this week. And I think the markets probably are going to chop uh, going into that. All right, so markets uh, correcting a bit. You've got all this news out from projects like or companies like Tesla, along with Ford, GM. All those really don't get the benefit. I was looking at this Reddit uh, theme right here on the unofficial 2023 uh, clean vehicle tax. I know some of you guys may not necessarily think, how does this apply to crypto or how will this apply to markets? What I look at is the automotive industry as being a big catalyst. And obviously electric is one of the things that creates a lot of activity. Obviously, we got Tesla doing a stock split, split this month, plus other aspects of all these new car makers that are really advancing their development on electric vehicles, which if this gets hit, again, starts to hit the car makers on the S&P 500, which most of which are on the S&P 500, including mm -hmm. uh, Tesla, of course. So I think that's a, a bigger look. Okay, so Real Vision puts out a tweet and says, all right, U.S. stocks, futures, crypto, both meaningfully up today. Uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum poking the heads at 24 and 18. No, I'm still in that same camp. I mean, in the very minimum, I think 25.5, I'm still have about an 80% probability that we'll get to that level. And if we just take a look at the chart, you can see we've just been meandering in this beautiful kind of consolidation yep. phase, right? So so it's been, it is a bearish channel. I mean, let's be clear on that, but that doesn't mean we can't go up a little bit. And if you look now, the high end of the channel is crossing right. The idea is we already, we already got a stronger than expected jobs number. If you couple that with higher inflation again, Again, the markets are going to say, oh, my goodness, the Fed has to do 75 basis points in September. And who knows if they can even stop going into the midterm elections at that rate. Right. So I would be very surprised if that happened. But if it did happen, you're looking at a big sell off, especially because the equity markets and even Bitcoin have rallied over the last couple months, especially since the last Fed meeting when the Fed was much more dovish. Right. Right. So that alone kind of is building in the fact the markets have been building in this idea that those CPI numbers are coming down. If that doesn't happen, watch out below. So here was uh, some interesting points right here. Producer price index. This was July. A consensus estimate right around 10.4 increase it. Yeah, I, I think that might be the catalyst to push us to that 25.5 level. So I wouldn't be surprised if the initial reaction is people's kind of breathing a sigh of relief saying, 
okay, we're past this nasty storm. I mean, granted, it's still inflation, right? So you're, it's not like inflation is negative or down to zero, but at least we're not seeing higher numbers. And I, and I agree with you, the lagging indicator of jobs. I mean, I can't, I mean, I'm sure you've talked about this, but like every day I, I see a new big mega company reporting new layoffs. And so yeah. even though we had a strong jobs number, at some point, all these companies laying off people, it's going to filter through. My guess is the next jobs number, we start to see that. And that's one more signal that the Fed probably has to take a, a slowing approach to raising rates. Right now? That, that's that's still what I'm looking at, right? Is that is that you have this period where the, the idea is maybe the Fed can generate a soft landing and that's giving these asset prices, we're seeing the stock market having quite a monster rally off of its recent lows. Bitcoin hasn't had a monster move, but if you look at Ethereum, Ethereum's had a huge move off of the lows as well. So, I mean, you know, the idea is the soft landing keeps us from going into recession. It keeps the Fed from really tightening too much more. But if you get this scenario, and, and this is what I think is going to happen, is I think you're going to see an economy that slips into a recession, then a worse recession. And the Fed, again, the inability initially to save the markets is, is by printing money like they have in past recessions is going to be very, very problematic. And it's likely going to trigger a domino effect into a worse recession. Now, at some point during this worst recession, probably in 2023, you're going to see the Fed say, oh, my goodness, unemployment is now at 10%. You know, with a recession, you usually see a reduction in inflation. Maybe inflation's come back to 4%. And they're going to say 10% unemployment, we have to start printing again, or at least lowering interest rates to stimulate growth and get some of these right. people off of unemployment. And that's going to be, to me, that is where where you see the pivot in Bitcoin from a risk on or, or risk on asset to actually becoming more like that gold and starting to take off in those printing money periods. The 10 year yield is, is very much a forecaster, right? So initially the Fed was gonna have to be so aggressive with all these 75 basis point hikes. So prior to those hikes, you really saw the 10 year yield surging to the upside. Now, interestingly enough, let me show you this here chart. Let's go to a different 10 year yield chart here that I have. But basically, if we look at that, and I'm not getting the right one up, but bottom line is there's a key, there was a key trend line hit right here where if we stretch this out, you can see that this trend line, the yields when we got to about 3.5% tagged that line. And you can see what's happened. I mean, it was, it was, you couldn't have nailed the better top in the yield, but notice what's happened. Since then, we've now seen the Fed kind of being a little bit more dovish, even in spite of the hot, the, the hot jobs number. And I think again, yields are likely starting to think about maybe the chance of a recession. And we all should remember that the bond market is known as the smartest of the markets. That big money from the bond market usually is a better forecaster than short term stock market moves. So I think that again, I wouldn't be surprised and I have it forecast that we could see um, in the next six months a move down on the 10 year yield to basically close to 2% before it starts to stabilize and maybe turn back up. And the only way that's gonna happen is if we slip into a steep recession where people start speculating that we now maybe will see the Fed loosen up on policy and maybe not be so aggressive. The concept that Bitcoin still is that risk on risk off asset at this point, but I do mm -hmm. think eventually you see that neck that that pivot point where you get Bitcoin to kind of be more of a dramatic mover to the upside during periods of turmoil. And again, I think that is coupled with the Fed starting to print again at some point in the in the distant future. Uh, in terms of trading with the, the ten year, it's it's right now it's not. It, it could mm -hmm. change obviously. But right now, I'm not seeing that. What's amazing about the price action recently, just yesterday, or I should say Friday and today, we saw the meme stocks running again like crazy, oh, yeah. like it was 2021, which tells you that small retail money is thinking that just like in in the, the, the COVID crisis, the Fed is going to come out, print, and get us all back to all-time highs in a matter of months. I think that's that's a fake out. I think the Fed, again, there's no way the Fed can print with the pressure it's putting on. And just think about politically, like you have a, a midterm election, the Fed can't start printing before that. I mean, that would be catastrophic no for the Democrats. So again, I agree that the printing will start again. It's just probably at some point in the next year to year and a half versus 
in the near term. Short term, I'm going to play the conservative side, and I think Bitcoin is the play here. Ethereum's already over 100% off of its lows. And I think, again, Ethereum has that higher beta where in, in market bounces, it's going to do more. But then in market bear markets, it's going to lose a lot more as well. And because I still think we have that leg down, I think if you had to choose one, you want Bitcoin because, again, it has the stability. It has relative stability to Ethereum. Now, longer term, that's the better question, right? Um, I think that, again, you probably want some exposure in both. So you cover both bases. You have the use case of Ethereum and the Ethereum network and then kind of the digital gold where a lot of a lot of institutional money will flow into the Bitcoin you know, Bitcoin investment. So, so I think in yeah. longer term, I like both of them. I think I would, I would generally say to people to be careful with other cryptocurrencies because, you know, we, we see, if you look back two years ago, a lot of the ones that were in the top 20 are no longer in the top 20 um, of market cap. So there are ones that are replacing, like Solana wasn't around that long ago. Avalanche yeah. wasn't around that long ago. And so there's still a jockeying for what the next, the third and the fourth and the fifth will be, um, as if you're looking at the blue chips. So I think you, if you're looking out long term, you don't know yet, but I would stick with Ethereum and Bitcoin as your investments for the longer term right now. Before we started the big run in 2021, in late 2020, in, in, in December of 2020, there was a bunch of choppy consolidation around 645. That's kind of what I'm looking at. So again, I'm not sure if we're going to see 300 or 200 of those numbers, but for me, that's where I would start to accumulate on a, on a big drop in Bitcoin. And that kind of makes sense, right? Because if you yeah. think about it, it would take it would be about a 50% haircut on to get us down in that general 10 to 12 range. And then you think Ethereum would probably do a 66% or so, and that would be right around that $600 level. So for me, I'd start accumulating around 600. And remember, you never want to just say, oh, I'm only going to buy everything at this level because you never know if it will hit. So put your put a small amount out here and a little bit lower and a little bit lower and do that same dollar cost averaging on entries. So I would say this is that, you know, you have two ways of looking at it. One is the pure technicals, which is the 10 to 12,000 range that we've been talking about. And right. then you have the, what if this is an absolute wipeout where you do see these exchanges go belly up and you do see 90% yeah. of cryptos go to zero, in which case you have to refer back to the Amazon chart at .com, the .com era, which went down 95%. So if, if that worst case occurs, you're talking about a $3,500 handle on Bitcoin. Now, again, at that that point everyone's like oh i'd buy as much as i can but remember you'll probably be so scared at that point that you're going to yeah. be like oh, i don't know if i want yeah. to so don't so just be trigger. aware of the emotional <laughs> what's that don't pull the trigger yeah you'll I be know. in the, you'll be I, in that it, it's it's always and, and i think i think the important thing to remember is that you know first of all fear is usually what you want to buy now it's hard to to remind yourself of that when you're fearful mm -hmm. but remember doing a small amount there's nothing wrong with that at that price you buy ten thousand dollars worth and that's the i mean think about what you could get with ten thousand today in terms of bitcoin not even half a bitcoin but you could right. get over three bitcoin or about three bitcoin at that point so you can always do it small and then if we if it is a long term bottom and we go to a hundred thousand, you're making a ton of money anyways. But you always want to do like a level where where if it is a debacle, you don't get hurt too much. Bitcoin goes into another key macro week in the United States with a welcome break to the upside. After avoiding a now familiar breakdown around the weekly close, BTC USD is surging higher at the time of writing on August 8 to once more tackle resistance in place for two months. Can the bulls win out? Momentum appears to be strong across crypto, but host of potential stumbling blocks lie in the way. With fresh US inflation data due, the macro picture could yet upset the status quo, while sellers likewise show no sign of budging to allow reclaim of levels above $25,000. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.